Today I'm going to be using some 3D printed parts to improve the quality of life of cleaning off the table of my milling machine. As I'll show you shortly, one of the things I wanted to do is to create some T-slot covers to replace ones I had made some time ago. The original ones that I made were from PLA. And this time I'm going to make them out of TPU, which is a material that I've never tried in the 12 or 13 years that I've had a 3D printer. So let me bring you in close and show you what I'm going to do. Cleaning out the machine after I've finished a job is not one of my favorite tasks. So not long after I got this machine, I 3D printed these covers for the T-slots, which has helped. I don't have them over here, I should have them over there as well. But there are a few problems with this. In addition, I keep getting chips in the fourth axis as well as in the stand for my tool setter. So it occurred to me I could 3D print covers for these as well as print new covers for these that I think will do a better job. So there are a few things I don't like about this. Number one, I made these so they have a lip. And that means that after I wash this down, even washing this down, sometimes the coolant gets under there and they kind of pull up. But when I use the air to dry the coolant or get the coolant off, they definitely lift up. So they haven't been very, working very well. So I want to do a version that is not covering it completely, but is down a little bit so I don't have this problem. So I'm going to go ahead and take these off, get the table uh, cleaned up, and then I'm going to start working on the new parts or the new covers, etc., that are going to go in here. So I'll go ahead and do this uh, off camera. The covers will need to be different lengths because the distance for the, each of the T slots is a little bit different. So I'm, I need to measure them. In addition, there's a little bit of space underneath each of the clamps. If you look here, here's the edge of the clamp. And if I move this underneath, I can move it a little bit. So the idea is if I make the cover a little bit longer, I can tuck it underneath each of the clamps. So I'll go ahead and measure all of these and then go to CAD, create versions for all of these slots and then uh, 3D print them. I made a uh, progression of parts, which is something I usually do to try to get it uh, just right. So the first part was based on a diagram that I, I found from my manual. And there are a few things wrong with it. Uh, one is that uh, the tabs to hold it in place are not high enough up, it's also not tall enough. And there are these chamfers on the side that uh, were not in the manual. So the next thing I did is I worked on getting the height correct. And this is the next part that I made. And this still isn't quite right, it's still a, bit, a little bit below. I probably should have just measured this. And then I went on to the next one where I also added a bevel at the top. So now this is getting pretty close, but again, it's too loose. So I moved the, the tabs on the side up a little bit so that it would bind in better. And so if I put this one in, this is a pretty good fit. There's a little bit of wobble side to side, but it's pretty close. And then I have the, the final version, which slips in nicely. It's not gonna move anywhere and it's flush, completely flush. Now the other thing that's important is that I'd be able to push it down like so and that it'll stay in place. I'm just testing here on the ends where I can just pull them out. I have the covers arranged roughly where they go. I figured that would make it a little bit easier to put them in. So I'm gonna start with this one back here. And as I mentioned, I want it to slip it a little bit underneath there and then just push it down. And what I'm discovering is that this one has an issue with the end. There's a little bit of interference, so I'm going to modify, need to modify this one a little bit, which I will do off camera. Now this one is a little more interesting. I'm gonna to have to kind of bend it. That's one of the nice things about TPU, which is I can bend it and then force it underneath the slot. And this also has some interference at the end, so I didn't look at that one carefully enough either. This one I think will be okay. There we go. And then these should be quite simple. And these I can actually just uh, push in from the end and then make them flush. 
So I'll go ahead and pull out the ones where there's some interference and then uh, make some changes to them. Now looking at it, uh, the problem with the one in the back is there's a little bit of interference on the bottom. So I'm going to see if I can uh, cut these with uh, scissors and now that's too hard. So I'm going to get some side cutters and try those. Now what I could have done is made these a little bit shorter. The reason I made them this long is because originally I didn't have this ridge on the, the, the top to keep it from going down. Uh, as well as the top. So between the ridge on the top, or the chamfer on the top, that goes this way out, uh, and these tabs, I don't really need the bottom anymore. So that's effectively what I'm going to do here on the end. I'm going to go ahead and cut off the, the bottom. And hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. I could, of course, just uh, 3D print these again, but uh, it's actually I'm going to do this like so. As I say, I could have just 3D printed it again, but this is faster, and I don't need to do this as a permanent solution. But it is a little bit fiddly. Okay, I think that should be enough for the one in the back. There's a, a strap or something else, I'm not quite sure what it is, that is sticking out, and that's what's interfering with it. So I'll give this a try again, and yep, that now sits down flat. So that's all I had to do. Uh, likewise here, there is something that's on the end. I'll have to go take a look uh, to see better what's going on, and then I'll go ahead and take care of those off camera. After a few minutes of trimming, these now fit a lot nicer, but I think I'm going to modify the, the CAD files so that they don't go down as far. And I may replace these a little bit later, or may not. Uh, they see they're working just fine now. But uh, except for over here, this could go down a little bit more. I mean, it should be fine, but it's, it's not quite as flush as I would like, or I should say it's not flush. It's slightly proud over here, whereas here it's flush. Uh, and so I probably just didn't trim enough off. But again, if I modify the CAD file, that would take care of that. After thinking about it some more, I modified the design so that it, it uh, doesn't go below the tabs. It stops at the tabs. And that means that there is room underneath and... Oh yeah, there's one other thing I changed. Let me pull that out. Also because there is a clamp or a T-nut underneath there, I should say, underneath the clamp, I also put a little uh, lip on here. So now when I push this down, I can move it over and it covers the T-nut as well as covers the left side. And then this one, of course, goes in from the end easily, or from the top. So I can push it in from the top and then that fits in perfectly. And then I also printed out ones for the other side of these T-clamps. You can't see the one in the back, but there's also one in the back. So I'm much happier with that. Then I also 3D printed some covers. For this, I printed this cover out of PLA. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it PLA. I may switch to TPU. And then for this cover, I did print this out of TPU. And we'll see how these work uh, in terms of uh, whether they stay on when I blow, thing, blow off the, uh, the coolant at the end. But um, it's a good starting point, so I'm pretty happy with this. Here's the final design for the cover. And you can see that it has the tabs on here, as well as the chamfer on the top. Now, one of the things I used here is configurations. This allows me to have all the different sizes that I'm using in a single file, and also to have variations. So if we go back here, you can see that the number of tabs changes. But also if we go to this size here, we have this little step there, which is designed to clear the T-nut, and that's easy to put in here. The configurations are controlled by this. Now, these are not very clear as to what they are, because they're just using the names of variables that were in sketches or other operations. But I can easily rename them, as you can see from the descriptions. This one is the, the length. And so as, you, as I click between them, you can see the length changes. 
and then this column is the number of tabs. So here I just have a single tab on both sides. Here I have three tabs on both sides. And so you can see it's, it's pretty easy to change all of that. And then finally, if I go here to this one, this last column is cutting the end. And you can see I have that enabled right there. So using configurations is a really nice way to have slight variations in the design and a bunch of different variations all in a single file. If I go back to the start, you can ignore everything on the left because this is actually the, the previous version of the slot cover that I created. This is the one that I decided to replace. So this is the new version that's designed to be made out of TPU. And so the beginning is very similar except instead of having a flat top, I have these chamfers which allow it to be flush with the top of the table. And then the, the distance between here and here is basically what keeps this in position between the T-slots. Now this is currently the full height. I decided to chop down the height later with a operation near the end. Next operation is to hollow it out. I made these, let me see what it is, two millimeter wall thickness. So I'll go to the next operation, which is to add the tabs on the side. So I add the tabs in the middle, then I mirror the tab to the other side, and then this is where I add the pattern. And the number of tabs that you see in here, which is this number here, is one of the configuration values. And then this is where I made it shorter. Now, I don't remember what these operations are. Oh yeah, this is to cut it shorter for the T-knot. And when I cut it shorter, it meant that this was not closed off anymore. So I went ahead and added that operation to close it off. And that's pretty much all I did. The other object that I have in here is a hole cover that I'm still working on for some other holes. So that's pretty much all that was uh, required to make this. It's uh, straightforward and using the configurations certainly helps a lot because it makes it, as I said, easy to have many variations within a single file. And then if I make any changes to the height, etc., it's reflected for all those versions unless I override them for a specific configuration. Now one thing I discovered with printing TPU is it goes a lot slower, but the quality is really, really good. I think the reason it goes a lot slower is because it can't push it through as quickly. This is just a guess because it's flexible. But as I say, it's the quality is really, really good. So I was very happy with results and definitely going to make more parts out of TPU as I need them. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you next time.